1. Still Life with Orchid As I'm sure is true for many of you, my first encounter with Claudio Attiano's art was with this painting. I saw it featured in a magazine that had been discarded in a cafe, and I was immediately struck by the balance of colour and light. The brightness of the pink orchid, set against the withered darkness of its dying leaves, suggests a tight anger, restrained under the illusion of cheer and tranquility. I talked with Atieno about this painting only once, shortly after we met, a little over a year ago. She was, and still is, reluctant to discuss her work. But this, as her first well-known work, seemed to fill her with a particular ire. Perhaps she had simply been asked about it too often. She felt it was often misinterpreted. That the decay creeping along the underside of the oranges symbolised the unavoidable presence of death. Not an unexpected interpretation, to be fair, but not what she had seen or planned when she made the painting. Atiana was thinking about the endless cycles all living things traverse, the Mobius strip of existence, the phases we see and those we never can. To her, the painting was always about what is unknowable rather than what is unavoidable. Look closely at the oranges below the flower. What do you see? Is death present and unavoidable? Do colours dictate immutability? Follow the almost winding stem of the orchid. How many strokes are in such a thin stalk? Can wispiness be conflated with predetermination? Do you care? You might say that what Tatiano sees is immaterial. Once art has moved from the shadows of its creator's studio into the bright, uncontrollable world, it belongs as much to those who see it as it does to the person who made it. For my part, knowing the depth of Claudia's feeling about this only makes the work more incredible. My feelings about it did not make any impression on her, of course. I attempted to describe the feelings still life with Orchid had awoken in me, but I was nervous struggling to form the right words to perfectly describe the awe I had for this masterpiece. I wanted Claudia Atieno to know that I adored her painting, but also that I was a professional artist myself, and that we were peers, that we could be peers, friends even. And in trying to moderate my tone and words, I talked too long. I mistook her intense eye contact for rapt attention, but it was not. In the middle of one of my many sentences, Claudia threw a plate at the wall of the cafe we were meeting in and would not consent to any more interviews. Hi, Jeffrey Craner here. Thanks for listening to our first teaser for Within the Wires Season 2. And now I'm so excited to announce the brand new actor to our show. You just heard her, the great Rima Tewiata who will narrate Season 2 as the artist Roy Mata Mangakahia. New episodes begin September 5th, and our donor-only episode number 0 goes up August 22nd. If you want to support our show and get a head start on the season with that exclusive episode, go to withinthewires.com to make a one-time donation of $50 or more. Hey, and if you haven't already, rate and review Within the Wires, and tell your friends. Tell them all about our immersive little podcast. And hey... Je t'aime, listener. Je t'aime.